Hey everyone, what's up? Thanks for checking this out. The video on the new 400-28TC Z-mount lens. Uh, I'm here in southern New Jersey. It's spring. The warblers are singing. I was just working with prairie warbler, hooded warbler, pine warbler, black and white, oven birds are around. Louisiana water thrush I heard. There goes an oven bird. Uh, anyway, tons of stuff out here and um, putting this lens to the test a little bit. So this is the first brand new lens I've ever owned as far as a, a long telephoto. My previous 500 f4, honestly, I think this thing is as heavy by itself as this is with the Z9. So uh, there's, there's the comparison of them. You can see if I put them side by side. The 500 is actually with the hood longer than the uh, 400 28 with the Z9 mounted to it, which is nice. But yeah, I mean, just a big difference in the weight, the balance, how it feels. It feels, I would say, pretty much perfectly balanced on the Z9. It's just a nice center of gravity here. It feels great. And the best part of this lens is two super telephoto, high-end prime lenses in one, basically. Um, right here, that's it, right there, that's the switch. There, now I'm 560 F4, back to 400 to 8. And here's the even better part. When I'm shooting through the viewfinder, I'm shooting, shooting, I get some at 400 and just like that, there I'm at 560. And then just like that, back to 400 to 8. I do not even have to take my eye out of the viewfinder. Um, you know, I've had some people ask me if this was worth it. And I would say yes, because it's like getting two lenses in one. You know, if you were to buy a 400 to 8, or a, and a 600 F4, obviously you're gonna spend more money. Yes, I know you could get a 400 28 and put a teleconverter in there, but the big difference to me is then you always have to think about it and decide, am I gonna bring the teleconverter? Am I gonna put the teleconverter in? Am I gonna lose that stop of light? And it's a decision. Trying to change a teleconverter in the field, I'm sure you've been there. It's not as convenient as you think it might be. I've brought a teleconverter with me all the time with the 500 F4, not all the time. I've totally brought a teleconverter with me in the past thinking like, oh, maybe I'll use it. And then I don't because when you're in the middle of shooting, it's just a giant pain. That's really what it boils down to. And so uh, having it built in on that switch right there, just a wonderful thing. Uh, some other great things about this lens. Um, yeah, it's fast and it's silent. Everything about it is silent. The VR on it, completely silent. I don't hear it at all. The focusing on it, incredibly silent. I don't hear that at all. So that's a really nice thing, especially with this silent Z9. Um, I don't shoot this with any shutter sound on it. I haven't since I've gotten it. That's kind of one of the advantages of an electronic only shutter, right? And so now I have just a fully silent rig, which is really, really nice. The VR on that 500 F4, really noisy it just always whirred in my ear and then it would when it would turn on and off it, you hear like a clonking noise and um you know did it disturb birds did i lose shots because of it no i don't think so but it's just annoying it just takes away from that experience of being out here and listening to nature so um, i love the silent nature of this lens and uh what else uh, some really nice buttons you know programmable buttons all the way around. There's this ring right here, which is nice. It's just like a nice little, it's textured different, which is easy to get to. And then you just kind of give it a little half rotation either way to activate it. Um, then there's this ring here, which is programmable. It's not programmable to a lot of things. I, I personally haven't found a use for it yet. Uh, the focus ring is nice. The foot, Nikon, come on, every freaking lens manufacturer, come on. Why are you putting these stupid feet on here? They're useless. So I haven't uh, seen a replacement for it yet, so I'm waiting for that to come out. Um, what else? Another function button on this side here. Uh, again, I haven't found a use for all these things. Um, the nicest thing that I have found is I was using this ring right here to recall focus. So uh, when I'm out here shooting these songbirds, um, even with this lens, a native Z-mount lens on the Z9, it still has that same problem of getting stuck in the background and not wanting to come back. And so now um, the Z9, the version 2.0, I think it is the newest firmware on this, allows me to program one of my function buttons down here to recall focus. So I just use the memory set on this side. I set it to minimum focus. So it's as close as it can be to me. And I just hold that set the focus, then I'm actually using the function three button, which is the lowest one here. So that way I can also access it when I'm shooting vertically. And anyway, if I shoot and miss focus and it hits the background, all I gotta do is hit that button, boom, focus jumps right back to me. And then I'm back to trying to get focus again. That has been much easier. This ring is really nice, 
and I did like it and it's not bad when I'm here, but I gotta tell you so many times with my hands down here and then in the heat of the moment, I need to get that focus back cause I miss it. And then I'm fumbling and I hit this ring and I had to disable that cause I was hitting it all the time and doing, I forget what I had to program to, but it was doing something I didn't want. Uh, and then I finally, you know, maybe I'm up here and I miss it and then I finally find the grip and then get to it. So just a lot more inconvenient, I would say. And then other times I'm in positions, hey Prairie Warbler, other times I'm in positions where it's just not physically convenient to get to that ring, any of these rings or any of these buttons. So while I think it's nice to have all these things on the lens, in real world use, in my real world use, the way I shoot, I don't shoot on a tripod, I'm shooting on a monopod less with this because this thing is just a dream to hold. Um, it's not easy to get to these things, you know? And my hands aren't always in the same spot. I'm holding the lens differently. Sometimes if I'm trying to shoot really low, I have the foot kind of rotated up to the top here. So I'm holding the lens down here, trying not to hit the you know manual focus ring and my hand isn't in the right spot. It's just, it's not easy to get to any of these buttons in my experience. So having the one fu function that I really find useful, which is to recall focus back close to me so I can try focusing again when I miss. Oh, there goes the hooded warbler too, nice. Um, having that program to the Z9 button, nice big difference there. Other than that, there's not a lot to say. Is it sharp? Yeah, of course. What lens isn't sharp these days? Uh, that's the other thing I hear so many times is, oh, is it gonna be sharp? This old 500 F4, when it hit focus, it didn't hit focus as often as this, but when it did hit focus, tack sharp. Like I don't see the sharpness difference. I mean, maybe if you're pixel peeping, zooming into 100% or past that with these 45 megapixel images, which I still think are overkill. Uh, if you're zooming in that far and you're seeing the sharpness difference and comparing back and forth image to image. Maybe you've done some test shots or seen some test shots of the same thing side by side with the same exact distance and then comparing sharpness like maybe you can tell then. But in reality, that's not how I'm shooting. I'm not out here shooting one lens next to the other and trying to compare and so on and so forth. Uh, it just, they're all sharp. I get photos submitted to me for my mentorship program from pretty much every camera and damn near every lens combination out there. Sony, Canon, Nikon, Olympus, all these things. Any modern lens, weird sound, sorry. Any modern lens these days look sharp to me. I don't think there's a big difference there. Yes, if you're pixel peeping, maybe you notice a difference, but in real world shooting, are you gonna see the difference between this lens and any other modern lens, especially a big prime telephoto lens that's sharp? No, I don't think so. Um, not even the zoom lenses, all the new modern zoom lenses, incredibly sharp. So, uh, you know, I, I would not buy this lens for sharpness alone. Um, I'm sure one other question people are gonna ask is, is it sharp with the TCN? Yes, it's sharp. I cannot tell the difference. I can't tell the difference between anything when that TC is in. Focus speed, um, sharpness, any of that stuff. All looks amazing when the TC is engaged. So yeah, that's, that's my take there. It's not even a question of you know, quality or anything. The only loss is that one stop of light, you know? And with uh, the decent high ISO on this Z9 camera, it, it's not really a big deal there. Uh, but it is so great to be able to decide in the field. And it's so wonderful to be able to shoot two different things of the same bird at the same time. You know, I shoot a few at 400 to eight, frame it up, give it a little space. You know, I like to shoot small in frame, right? And then why not? Let me shoot a little bit closer, get a tighter shot. Uh, the bokeh changes a little bit. You know, it gets larger when you shoot it at 560 millimeter and F4, even though it's a lower aperture or I'm sorry, a higher aperture. Um, just that magnification as far as when I'm shooting like really nice foreground bokeh in the water or something like that, the bokeh actually seems to be larger at 560. The other thing to remember that a lot of people have asked me about this lens is, uh, can you tell the difference between 400 and 500 and 560 and 600 at four? No, I, I think if you, unless you're shooting side by side comparisons, I think any viewer isn't even gonna be able to tell the difference between what all of these lenses and focal lengths look like. They all look like beautiful, long, telephoto, highly compressed, shallow depth of field images. That's just the look of any modern long lens. So uh, I wouldn't buy it just for the look of it. In my opinion, the main reason to buy this lens is the versatility of it. It's light, it's balanced incredibly well, it's silent, it's sharp, and to be able to flip back and forth between 400 and 560 just at the flick of a switch, just like that, you hear the satisfying thud. Here we go, you ready? 
Oh yeah, that's the sound right there. Um, so actually, and, and you can actually kind of slow it down and make it pretty much quiet. If I actually hold the lever when I'm flipping it, uh, I can make it completely silent and just take the time um, so it doesn't kind of clunk into place. So you can make that quiet. Uh, but in any case, that's the reason to buy this lens is the versatility. Um, it's not for anything else. I wouldn't say buy it for the look of the shots. I wouldn't say buy it for the sharpness, the speed of focus or anything like that. I mean, it is sharp and I love that it's a native Z mount lens now, finally, but um, yeah, everything else seems the same. So that's my thoughts on this lens. I know I repeated a bunch of stuff there, but um, I just wanted to kind of give you my thoughts on it and what I think about shooting it. I'm having a blast with it. I'm really happy to have this lens and um, Prairie Warbler says goodbye. Oh, real quick, I almost forgot. If you do have any questions, specific questions about this, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them there or I'll do a second video following up with that. I am gonna put a second video out with a follow-up on the Z9. I love the camera, it's absolutely amazing. Um, it still has those struggles in uh, getting stuck on the background, but um, I've, I've worked around it just like I explained uh, with the new firmware, it's really nice with that. And so yeah, I'll put out a video for that as well. And uh, hopefully, um, Hopefully soon, I'm gonna be able to give you some behind the scenes footage, some stuff shot through this lens. Uh, the rig that I had used prior that had all of my stuff kind of mounted around it with this 500 F4 down here doesn't fit the 400 to 8 because it's fatter around here, especially with that teleconverter bump. So um, I have some new stuff on order I should receive tomorrow, see if I can get my whole rig set up and then I'll start giving you some through the viewfinder shots so you can see how this lens actually performs. But trust me, I, I don't think you're gonna notice a difference between and if you've had any lens bought within the last 10 years that's a big fast prime they all are great they're amazing every single lens is amazing if you've had any zoom bought within the last handful of years they're all amazing they're fast they're wonderful just go enjoy bird photography and have fun